Let's be real. <laughs> Sentinel Prime is the perfect villain for Transformers 1. Being the false prime, being the image of Cybertron's corruption, and being the one who broke up D-16 and Orion Pax's bromance. Obviously the sentiment that Sentinel Prime is a weak villain in Transformers 1 is false. Because he is perfectly evil. And shame on those who think otherwise. And obviously, it wasn't a big twist that this smiling doofus was the villain of Transformers 1. Sentinel Prime is an asshole in nearly every piece of Transformers fiction I've seen him in. But, the big twist with Sentinel Prime is how evil this sexy maniac is. With his selfish actions dooming the entire planet of Cybertron. Number 1. Sentinel Prime is the false prime. And let's get this out of the way. What makes the 13 primes truly prime is how they are chosen by the Transformer God, Primus. Primus chose them because he saw an ability in those individuals and they could spread his image to the world. And I don't even know if that's accurate or not, but I mean, that's how I can explain it. However, Sentinel Prime is a false prime because he wasn't chosen by Primus to be prime. He was a lowly clerk for the 13 primes and pretty much nothing more. So he wanted to rise up amongst the ranks. So through force, Sentinel took Prime. Which I don't understand why he would want to take Prime through force. Those Prime energy drinks aren't really worth stealing. Fucking disappointment. Seriously, Sentinel betrayed Cybertron and Primus by first working with Cybertron's enemies, the Cornizons, and then Sentinel killing his way to the top and to be a prime. And him doing so lost Cybertron the matrix of leadership, leading to the loss of Cybertron's energon supply. And with this loss, it forced newly created Transformers not to be who they truly are, and being cogless in a way, and being forced to mine for as long as they known and for as long as they live. Essentially creating this classist Transformer society. They weren't necessarily forced for survival needs, but they're actually more forced by Sentinel to pay off his debt. Which, man, what an asshole. That shit disrespectful as fuck! That shit disrespectful as fuck! I was gonna buy that nigga out here, bro! I was gonna turn up with that nigga! Anyways, overall Sentinel Prime is the perfect villain for Transformers 1. Because he is the false prime that betrayed and doomed Cybertron. He isn't just a villain for our main group of Orion Pax, D16, B, and Alita 1, but he is a villain to the entire race of Transformers. And I'm not the only one who believes Sentinel is the perfect villain for Transformers 1. My homie Cineflake agrees with me, who y'all should support by the way, because he really makes great content and he is just a really solid dude. And Cineflick was the one who actually made me excited for Transformers 1 in the first place. So having him on here to share more Transformers knowledge than I ever could is absolutely fantastic and an absolute blessing. So take it away, Cineflick. Sentinel Prime. Ah, yes, Sentinel Prime. The arrogant jerk archetype in the Transformers franchise, one of many, though one of the more well-known ones. Not including the fact that it was later retconned that these characters in G1 and the Marvel comics were him, he's been quite the mainstay in the Transformers universe ever since shoving his ego onto our screens with Transformers Animated. It's a great show by the way, please watch it however you can. From Optimus's opposite to backstabbing mentor in Dark of the Moon, he deserved that shotgun to the head. Oh, Optimus! To now a false ruler of Cybertron, where he still has an ego as big as that sexy chin of his animated. But out of all these, I think one manages to craft my favorite interpretation that we have ever seen of the character. It gets all the key aspects down, that's for sure, but also it's the way that the film is not afraid to hold back on its political messaging of false identity, corrupt government, social caste systems, and society that really manages to help craft a beautifully disturbing sense of morale in what was badly advertised as a fun little kids film. Badassatron. Cybertron looks to be a peaceful planet, a working society even long after the Golden Age. A working planet of higher classes racing to the 5000, and miners who work down in the pits to avoid Darkwing at all costs. 
But much like governments and societies in real life, a sweet exterior hides the corrupted ideology within the interior. As we truly see how Cybertron is kind of a fucked up planet. How that's the thing I love about most TF media is the fact that no matter what continuity, they really love to show how corrupt the world was even before the Great War started between Optimus and Megatron. This mixes in a lot of what Dreamwave, IDW, and the Align continuity all showcase, being a social caste system with bots forced into jobs at birth and stripped of the freedom that they deserve and strive for. But one kind of takes a bit of a dark turn with it all by really going in on the corrupt politics and how much of a scumbag Sentinel is. Which, I mean, if you accomplish that, you wrote a good Sentinel Prime. Cooper even pointed this out. I think in design also, Sentinel is greatly presented. Obviously, he pulls a lot from the animated design, which is fantastic. But from his cocky smile to the way his wings evoke an angel, he's meant to be looked at as a light of hope almost. Like, the one to bring Cybertron into a new golden age, only for that beautiful exterior to hide the corrupted interior. Sentinel is the corrupted higher class individual selfishly taking power into his own hands for his own needs, killing the primes for greater power only for him to lose that and cause his planet to suffer in energon production. This is what you get for working with Quintessons, man, like, you, you just can't trust those guys. But even with that quintessential threat, they don't try and tell you that it's just the Quintessons causing all this, they still go forward and showing how everything Sentinel has done has been his fault all of his actions lead to greater consequences. Something I wasn't even expecting them to actually reveal here is the reason for the miners to be cogless and working down in the mine. Sentinel essentially removing a part of their identity for his own selfish needs. Jesus Christ, that is fucked up. He's in a way reflective of leaders in politics and how discriminatory they are towards lower class individuals and the ways they exploit them in order to get what they want. My friend pointed this out well, but there's almost a transgender allegory in the devastating yet beautiful mindsets of it all. The miners were all born with what made them who they are, only for it to be stripped away by Sentinel, almost like someone dictating who you are and stripping you of what you are made to be. You live your life as someone you're not, desperately wanting to go out as more, only to find out you were stripped of that identity, stripped of who you truly were and who you were supposed to be in life, and you're finally gifted it. You are finally able to embrace who you truly are and live happy, live free, feel alive in every single way. Finally fight back against those dictators and higher class figures above you and take back who you rightfully are. It's why that scene of the bots first transforming is just absolutely beautiful in my opinion. As we see them discover the true part of themselves and really tap into the full potential they were made for, I mean just... Megatron's laugh of happiness just says it all for me. It's tragic yet inspiring the way the movie plays all this out because it isn't afraid to show how similar it is to our real world and the false leaders people follow, with some not even doing anything to break out of the circumstances they're in. But a simple change can do numbers in building a better society, coming out of your shell to embrace who you truly are and fight back against the people who took your life away from you. Even though in the end, sometimes, it can lead to a losing battle. Because sometimes when wanting to build a better society, ideologies and visions clash in the process of it all. Which leads to fractures in what was meant to be a lasting brotherhood and friendship. Back to you, Hooper. Thank you for having me on this. It was a pleasure. Number three, Sentinel Prime broke up D16 and Orion practices bromance. To sum up D16 and Orion practices friendship, they met as miners and had a good time being homies, but when they found out the truth that Sentinel doomed Cybertron, it led them to want to solve this problem in completely different ways. And I know it's a silly point because D16 and Orion made their own choices to go their separate ways and not ride into the sunset together, but Sentinel, or the idea of Sentinel, broke this duo up because the idea of Sentinel, the one who betrayed Cybertron and doomed Cybertron, to oblivion and into an eternal debt to the Quintessons, projected onto D and Orion. Side note, these points I'm gonna make now are inspired by another creator, Zenil to the Rule. I don't know if I said that right, but he made such a fantastic video about it. And he made a video, The Deep Rooted Tragedy of Orion Pax in D16, and it's such an excellent video. Damn, I can't say it. It's one of the main reasons why I'm making this video. So shout out to that channel and link in the description for that. So what D took away from Sentinel's betrayal is never ever trusting or taking orders from anyone again. 
essentially creating himself to be the leader of his own life. And eventually the dictator of this Decepticons, but we didn't really talk about that yet. What Orion took away from Sentinel's betrayal is that Sentinel's rise to power was through force and oppression. Creating a society where the top looked down on the bottom. So, Orion never advocates for this society of the top looking down at the bottom. Or the freedoms of individuals being taken away. Instead, advocating for the people's right to choose. Aiming to lead these miners together as one. I don't know if that was great or not, but fuck me. So to witness these beliefs, these former homies, and what they think about each other is absolutely tragic. Orion's view on D is tainted because D wants to rise up amongst the ranks with the belief of one bot over another, which is what Sentinel's entire belief system is. And D's view on Orion is tainted because Orion is trying to be another leader in D's life, taking away his power to lead himself, which D won't tolerate anymore since he doesn't trust leaders since Sentinel already fucked up his view on leaders. So he resents Orion for it viewing him as an obstacle to be removed, not a homie to be reasoned with anymore. This absolutely culminates when Orion refuses to allow D to publicly execute Sentinel in the final act. D sees this as absolute betrayal because Orion is restricting his freedom to lead himself through this choice. And also, I bet that those words, don't be like Sentinel, weren't the best words, Orion. Those words echo to Orion and D16, fracturing their relationship for good. To be honest, Sentinel did not have direct influence over the situation, but his influence and betrayal did affect those two pillars of the inevitable Cybertronian War. Orion Pax and D-16, later known as Optimus Prime, the leader of the Autobots, and Megatron, the leader of the Decepticons, these two pillars of the Cybertronian War. Overall, Sentinel influenced the breakup of D-16 and Orion Pax's bromance. Essentially, the catalyst of it, leading to these two to be the pillars of the Cybertronian War. And goes to show that Sentinel was the perfect villain for Transformers 1. So yeah, let's be real. One little bit before we wrap up. Sentinel Prime perfectly fits the villain role for this specific Transformers story. Since this Transformers story is an origin story for the Cybertronian society, and the pillars of the Cybertronian War, Megatron and Optimus. And we can't have them fight off the get-go. So we gotta build that brothership up. So that split into opposing sides. So that split into opposing sides hurts them so much more. And the Quintessons, as cool as a concept they are, and how cool they could be as villains, they're not the best catalyst to break up this brotherhood. Plus, from the stuff we see, they're not that fun to watch. So instead, the villain they chose embodies the corrupt system that brought Cybertron where they are now, in need of Energon. And they pick the villain that is charismatic, charming, and overall entertainingly evil, which makes it so much more fun to watch. And seriously, I'm so glad that we have a Transformers version of Homelander in my lifetime. Absolute madness. And they pick the perfect villain with the perfect lie that is so powerful that when the truth of this lie, of this corrupt system is out, the new divide amongst the Cybertronian society erupts the nation. Transformers 1 needed a catalyst to divide the Cybertronian society, and that smug son of a Sentinel Prime was the perfect fit for that. So yeah, let's be real. Sentinel Prime is the perfect villain for Transformers 1. Being the false prime, being the image of Cybertron's corruption, and being the catalyst of the breakup between D-16 and Orion Pax. And we'll say, as hard as it is to find a bright spot in Sentinel Prime's villainy, it just goes to show the different reactions to a bad situation. A realistic reaction to a bad situation is Megatron's, with Megatron wanting to burn down the Cybertronian system that's established to showcase their hurt and betrayal that he felt. And then there's Optimus Prime's reaction, a reaction evoking hope, even when there might not be hope to see. The hope that we can and will transform our world to be something better, even when we're one with the Allspark. And the hope that our influence on this world is a good one, a legacy worth leaving a legacy and hope as bright as Optimus Prime made use of leadership. Why did I...
Die. Seriously, Sentinel betrayed. I know he made a fantastic video about the deep-rooted tragedy of Orion Pax D16, which is such an excellent video, such an excellent video. Since this, I can't speak. talk. Insert Cineflix part. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Hey. Ho oh, wow. wa. Seriously, special thanks to Cineflake for really jumping onto this video. It was an absolute blessing to have him on, and he really, he really put the time in, and it was just awesome to see. And I hope I work with him soon. You know, just a lot of stuff. It was very, it was great fun. Absolutely fantastic. Ah, uh, goodbye.